。各位观众朋友们，大家好，欢迎收看 J 与 J 论坛，由我 Jimmy 马马健，由我们的好朋友 Jim n o b e r 为我们一起讨论这个礼拜的时事。Jim， Hello Jimmy， It's It's a miracle that you are with us recording as at this moment. Uh, I have not even heard the details because it just happened less than twenty four hours ago. So me and our audience will hear from you this miraculous incident that happened, and the fact that you're here with us sharing it.、Um, what happened last night, Jim? Well, the main thing is God's been watching over me, and.、Um, What happened was I was at a at a dinner、uh, for the leadership of the Houston area、uh, pastors council because they've asked me to help them spearhead their initiative to improve homelessness、uh, in Houston,、uh, taking advantage of some of the things I've done when I was housing director, etc. But as I was driving home a little bit after eight,、um, I. Crossed、uh, a freeway frontage road, and as I was crossing that major intersection, a drunk driver hit me、um, in the、uh, driver's side, in the passenger door, right behind the the main door, and the、um, rear wheel, and he hit me very, very hard, and that immediately sent the car spinning around, and as it spun, it flipped. Over, and when it flipped over, the sunroof that we have, the glass sunroof, broke, and my head scratched along the pavement.、Um, and it it was a very wild ride. And as I was,、um, I was conscious the whole way through. And and when the car came to a stop. Um, I did not realize that I was upside down, and I knew I had to get out of the car because I was afraid of a gas leak and an explosion.、Um, and so I clicked off my seatbelt. Major, major、um, safety item number one: wear a seatbelt,、uh, because I held onto the the steering wheel and the、um, airbags cushioned everything for me. Uh, except on my head, and and、um, uh, when I when I opened the seatbelt, I fell,、um, and I I fell about three inches and hit my head on the ground again.、Um, but thankfully, it didn't hurt, and I uh, uh, I scrambled around. And, and remember, the the car was totally upside down, so I was walking on the roof or crawling on the roof. I tried to get out the back door, and some people were gathering outside. And a smart guy broke the glass、um, on on the rear window, and I could have climbed out through there, but in doing so, I would have cut myself tremendously because of the broken glass. Somebody else was able to work very hard and get one of the passenger doors open. That's what it looked like、um, when I landed and、yeah. crawled out. This is it. Do, do you see it? Yes, yes, I see it very well, and I hope our audience does too. Yes. My goodness, how I mean, it looks so bad. I mean, goodness, look at the glass. Look at, look at how bad. How many times did it flip?、Uh, I think one and a half,、um, because both sides of the car are very seriously damaged, and the only way they would be that damaged is by flipping over. I mean, look、um, at this. Honestly, while it was going, I, I, I lost track. I mean, I was conscious the whole way, but I lost track of exactly what was happening.、Um, and、um, one of the other pictures shows the door open that the、uh, other gentleman and somebody reached their hand in to me. A woman reached her hand in to me and、uh, pulled me, and I pulled, and I gradually got out. I had to kind of walk uphill to get out. Um, it was it was a bit of an ordeal to get out. Yeah, there's one of the doors that are open,、um, and、uh, when I got out, of course,、um, I had my head cut、um, by the abrasions on the on the pavement, and I was bleeding pretty badly on my head. And so everybody was kind of scared for me, and、uh, they sat me down, and、um, 
somebody offered me a T-shirt to blot everything. And uh, the, one of the amazing things is that uh, there were so many good people, just good people. These weren't the firemen or the policemen. They were just people who had witnessed the accident and came and to help. And uh, they sat me down. And uh, one of the other nice things that occurred is normally when I drive, I keep my cell phone in the cup holders between the seats. Had I done that, the, fo the phone would have flown all around and I never would have found it. But thankfully, I had it in the breast pocket of my shirt. And as soon as I, or the breast pocket of my coat. And as soon as I got out, I instinctively reached for it. And the first thing I did was call my wife, who in turn called our daughter, and they were both there in less than 10 minutes, wow. which was a wonderful thing to have it happen at home. But as, as one of the policemen told me later, um, if I had been going a little bit, um, a little bit slower, or he had been going a little bit faster, and they would have hit me three feet further um, toward the front of the car, it would have impacted exactly where I was sitting, and I would not be here today talking to you. Um, and so I, I immediately come away with several major uh, lessons learned. Number one, uh, I am a benefit of a miracle. Um, not to have, um, not to have any, literally any bodily injury, let alone not being destroyed um, by this. Um, number two, the the uh, safety um, measures in um, cars today are absolutely amazing. Um, those airbags um, cushioned everything. I, who knows what would have happened had they not worked? I, I, I don't want to even think about that. And then number three, my goodness, um, um, uh, drunk driving is a terrible catastrophe, terrible catastrophe. Um, the young man who was driving the other car, the, the police took him away in handcuffs. Um, he's, I, I, this is a huge mistake that will cost him for a great deal of time. But thankfully, um, it was only the automobiles that have been wrecked. Of course, his his criminal record is wrecked, his insurance is wrecked, all of those other things. But we can replace cars and we can replace pa paper. If I had been significantly hurt or killed, or even if he had been significantly hurt, he, he was able to get up and walk away too. Um, then he would never have been able to get that off of his conscience. And I, I hope, uh, I have not spoken to him, but I hope very much that he no longer drinks at all. And I have, I have always been a hawk on the enforcement of uh, drunk driving laws, and now even more so, even more so. Uh, oh, I, I just found out, I mean, this is the first time I've heard it. Um, I mean, literally it happened less than 24 hours ago. Jim, first of all, God bless and no good deeds go undone. You're literally volunteering your time to help homeless, and this happens. God has plans for all of us. Yeah. It is a miracle because I'm sure your life flashed. I, I've been in a car accident before. My life flashed in front of my eyes yeah. during the moment of impact. Um, yeah. I, I mean, looking at the pictures, for you to sit here and still share the story with us today, it's unbelievable. There's no internal bleeding, no concussion. There's no fractures. Uh, you, you can say, like like the police said, yes, the seatbelt loss matter, uh, airbags matter, DWI, drunk driving enforcement matters, and, and but there's still so many unknown. Defensive driving, I mean, it, it, anything could happen at any moment when we're on this earth that it could be taken away from us. Yeah, yeah, it could, it could. And um, that's what it's, caused me to think about how... how we talk about, and I'm fond of saying that I've experienced great fortune in my entire life and how many things we have to be thankful for. And today is one day, after, uh, one week exactly to the day after Thanksgiving, and it's only a few weeks more before Christmas. So it's a particularly important holiday season for us. 
but to give great thanks for all the good fortune. And I can just add this to the list of good fortune that I've enjoyed. Um, and part of that good fortune, and I mentioned this to you in some of our correspondence today, I believe in American exceptional, exceptionalism. And I think many of the things that helped me last night that go well beyond what we've talked about so far um, are very important uh, to us. One is the safety in our automobiles. Now, that doesn't happen necessarily in other parts of the world. Some places, yes. But the U.S. has always been a pioneer in that kind of uh, traffic safety. Another is the high quality of our professional uh, first responders, our firemen, our policemen. They were not only very, very good at what they do. They were very courteous. They were very professional. They collaborated. They knew exactly what to do. And the official time of the action, it was 813. By five minutes to nine, all the vehicles had been moved. The street was swept. And um, and uh, the street was open for traffic again. Where did this happen? Uh, pardon me, where? Where was it? Uh, it was on Post Oak Road at the intersection of 610. I was headed west on Post Oak, uh, coming into Uptown Park, and the man who hit me was headed north on the 610 Frontage Road. Oh, my God. I know exactly where you are. And that is a high-speed impact because he's coming off the loop onto the yeah, feeder. The, yeah. The, the the police asked me how fast I thought I was going, probably 25 or 30, because that, that area there is not high speed. But the front high traffic area is high speed. I suspect, I don't know for sure, and I don't know there's a way to tell. I suspect somebody that really understands what vehicles look like when they get impacted could probably tell. I, I, I think you tell from the skid mark on the on the on the road, the the tire mark, the brake marks. They will be able to tell the speed from that. Probably, probably so. Good point. Good point. What kind of vehicle was he driving? A Toyota Camry. And what kind of vehicle did you have? Uh, I was on a Ford Edge, a small Ford. SUV. It's an SUV, though, right? An SUV. Yeah. Mm. And you know, we always say uh, it's heavier. Is a heavier vehicle a little bit, uh, perhaps? more protection uh, oh. compared to, uh, say, a compact import uh, Japanese or Korean uh, model cars where it's a little bit lighter. So oh. there's many factors that went into this that that you, that you worked out. Um, I am just amazed that you're here still taping. Um, you, I know. That, and, and there's a couple of other pieces to the story, too. So the police recommended that I take an ambulance to one of the hospitals. And okay. I, and my wife and I both said, no, I'm, I'm in good shape. Um, and they said, but you need to get checked out. And of course, my wife being a dentist, she understands the medical protocols very well. And she understands what blood looks like uh, quite well. So, so we said, we'd rather just go to one of the emergency rooms nearby, which we did. And I have to say here again, our medical system uh, came through with flying colors. Uh, the people that treated me um, were absolutely professional. They knew exactly what to do. Within, with it, I just walked in, and within a half an hour, I was having CAT scans. I was having sophisticated blood work. The CAT scans over my whole body. Not only did they want to check for concussions to my head, they wanted to make sure that there was no back or spine or neck problems, no muscle problems and no internal bleeding. And of course, again, I'm very fortunate that I, I passed all of those with flying colors. Almost nobody does. My wife did a little homework today on uh, SUV accidents and 35% of um, accidents where SUVs turn over are fatal. And um, 30%? 35%. Wow. So I said, well, I'm doing my part to reduce the statistics there, so. Well. Uh, I mean, it, it, you're, you're the one percenter to have no major injury. I mean, 35 percent fatality. Fatalities. Yeah. That's fatalities. And then, oh, Jim, not, it's not just no broken bones or 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 things. But I, I I'm I'm just very happy. I I, I genuinely was. I, I couldn't believe it. Um, if you just sent me the looking at the pictures, they there's no way you could tell me the person in that car came out with with just a scratch and the perpetrator or the person that caused this accident was arrested. Uh, did he run a red light? 
Don't know. I suspect so, but I don't know. Um, that's another thing. Um, I uh, uh, a lot of my conservative political friends do not like red light cameras because they think that red light cameras are um, an infringement on your uh, personal privacy. Yes, and they are a technique for uh, surveillance, surveillance, and tra- um, and and uh, generating revenue through more traffic tickets. Um, I have a very different view of that, however, and my view, and has always been, has nothing to do with what happened last night, that they should be a technique for reducing people running red lights, and they should increase traffic safety, and they should increase um, surveillance of people who break the laws. In other words, they should lead to security cameras all over the place. For instance, had we had a security camera at that intersection, we'd be able to know exactly what happened. Right now, um, I don't know for sure, um, and all of us are somewhat speculating. I do believe investigators who understand what crashes actually look like and and how they're caused. And there are multiple eyewitnesses because that's a high traffic area. There were, yes, but I'm not sure how they're going to find those those witnesses. Um, Several of the people were very, very kind to me and stayed with me until the professionals arrived. But then once the professional arrived, the other people just kind of floated away. Now, maybe maybe the firemen interviewed them and got some some names and addresses. But um, I I I wasn't prepared to. So you were in shock. Uh, A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And you didn't know how I mean, looking at the vehicle, you don't know how bad injuries are. I mean, with these. Um, the the accident I was in, um, I was also hit, I was in a vehicle with someone, I was hit by a drunk driver going the wrong way on 59. I was going south, it was by Hillcroft. Uh, I was very young, college then, um, hit us head on. (laughs) And I was in the backseat. Um, I walked out, I mean, the car was total, we were very lucky, but my neck and my back hurt for months after that, months. And so the long-term effects are you just don't know. And, and who knows? I mean, I was young. I was able to recover, but um, I don't know if I can do it now. So either way, it's a miracle. And the fact that you're still being compassionate for the for the person that caused the accident earlier, you were saying uh, his life will be changed. Drunk driving has wrecked countless lives all over the world, especially here in the United States, because we have the most vehicles on the road. It is it is a problem. Alcohol is a problem and, and enforcement of traffic laws. Uh, I remember the, the big uh, argument during COVID is why do we let the government decide what to put on our body? Why do we have to wear a mask? It's like, why do we have to wear a seatbelt? Why do we have to stop at a red light? Why do we yeah. not? Why are we not allowed to drink a certain amount and then drive? There's a reason because without enforcement, human nature is going to be... You, you need you yeah. need this to 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 protect the majority to protect the innocent because of one mistake this uh, one choice to drink and then drive you affect countless lives so if something that happened to you it would affect your entire family your friends people that care about you is not recoverable the homeless that was going to be helped the the charities you support I mean it, it, the ripple effect is tremendous. So I count our blessings. I want to thank God and thank everyone that, I mean, you're safe. You're, you're good. You, everything checked out and it's faith in our system that we are fortunate to be in a place where it gets resolved quickly. Because I know myself, my, 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 my own experience, sometimes you go to the ER, you could wait for eight, nine, 10 hours sitting there waiting, depending on how busy they are. Yeah, they got me in immediately. And, uh, so, and, and there are accidents yeah, where people wait hours for the officers to show up, depending on the time of the day and what areas. And right, right. And during that kind of time, anyway, that's my, yeah. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. That's Sorry. my that's my story. <laughs> no, it's I I, I'm, I'm better news. For- no, this is great news. This tells us, please wear your seatbelt. Don't drink and drive. Defensive driving is paramount. I mean, there's something. This, there's this incident. There's nothing else you could have done. You're minding your own business, driving below speed limit, going through a intersection. There is nothing else you could have done to avoid it. I mean, literally, there is nothing. I really don't think so. Really don't think so. 
Jim, I hope you recover, stay in, spend time with your loved ones and, and cherish, you know, this miracle. And uh, I would love to take you out for a drink to celebrate this. Uh, what a drink. One drink. And and I Uber. That's the key. That's why technology Canada is Uber. Uber. Okay. It's okay. Uber. How hard yeah. is it? Leave the car there, Uber, and Uber back the next day to get the car. It's not no, that that's, hard. That's the answer right there. That's the answer right Uber. there. Or have someone pick you up. Or have a designated driver. It is not that hard. We're, But the fact is we're older and we plan for these things now, right? It's younger people. It, be careful out there. So especially during the holiday times, um, I hope our audience knows during this, there's a much higher number of drunk driving during the holidays. Yeah, so they please are, be just people are celebrating, but it, it, it works the other way. Anyway. Yes. Thank sir. you. Appreciate it. Take care, Jim. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next week. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.